Hello Crypto students, welcome again to another video of an introduction to companies. In this video, we'll be doing companies general ledger accounts. So, in the previous video, I talked about share capital, right? Share capital as as the amount which the shareholders have invested. Or the money that the shareholders have invested into the company so there are two types of shares there are two types of shares there's what we call preference shares and ordinary shares but for the purposes of this course in grade 12 you'll be only dealing with ordinary shares hence you'll see the name ordinary share capital when we been ref when we're referring to the amount which the shareholders have invested in the business, which is the share capital, you'll be seeing this name a lot. So, ordinary share capital. It's a general ledger account, just like the capital account, just like the capital ledger account. It is an income account. It increases on the credit side, decreases on the debit side. I also talked about what is called dividends dividends the share of the company's profits which is given to the shareholders so it just makes sense because since profit is an income and then if there's something there's an amount that's taken from that profit it means the company is losing money right just like drawings drawings were an expense but they were a special expense they were in, they were not included in the income statement same as dividends dividends they are also a special expense and they won't be included in the income statement that but they are an expense meaning dividends will increase in the on the debit side and decrease on the credit side we also having i talked about retained income retained income i said is it is what is retained from the profits of the company after dividends have been issued is the money that's left over which is just kept by the directors for future expansion of the business or to increase the cash flow of the business now it's it states itself retain income it's an income it increases on the credit side and decreases on the debit side it's an income the business is not losing money it's actually gaining money but remember it is this money is money that was supposed to go to shareholders but it was retained by the directors for future expansion this tells us that if it happens that a shareholder decides to leave the company when a shareholder leaves a company he or she will share will sell his shares to the company or can sell them to someone else but if if he's if he or she sells them to someone else it's just obvious that it won't be a transaction that's taking place between the shareholder and the company therefore the company does not necessarily need to record anything but if the shareholder sells sells her shares to the company the shareholder is going to sell these shares by the amount for for that is going to sell these shares for the amount that she invested in the business and for the profits that have been retained since he came into the business so this means that the share price the share price will include an amount from what from the ordinary share capital and the retained income because the shareholder 
when he when he first invested in the business, he invested with the intention of gaining profit, right? Gaining some amount from his invested, gaining an extra amount. That extra amount is what is retained. As I said, the profit is not entirely distributed to shareholders. Some of it is distributed, some is retained. So when the shareholder decides to sell shares to the company, when the shareholder decides to sell his shares to the company, that share price is going to include the amount from the ordinary share capital and the profits that have been retained since ever the shareholder became a shareholder into the company. I Meaning if the shareholder was a shareholder for five years, all the profits that have been retained for those five years, the shareholder is going to include them when he sells the shares to the company. Right? Therefore, this is called buying back of shares. Buy back. This is called buying back of shares. In other words, the company is buying shares back from the shareholder. The shareholder is selling shares to the company. It's called buying back of shares. Just note that the share price will include two amounts. The amount from the retained income and the amount from the ordinary share capital. We also have... An account called income tax it's also straightforward income tax is an expense it increases on the debit side and decreases on the credit side expenses increases on the debit side and decrease on the credit side now I said to you dividends are issued two times per year issued during the year and the final dividend is issued is issued at, at financial year end the final dividend is issued at financial year end sorry about that so when a dividend is is issued the dividend is first declared and then paid so this means that this final dividend and the interim dividend they are going to be declared to declare the dividend this means you are sort of like admitting or accepting that yes we are going to give you guys dividends and then you're not paying the dividend yet you are telling the shareholders that we're going to issue give you guys dividends and then you're going to pay after after some time that you're going to pay those dividends so interim dividends are declared and paid because they are issued during the year final dividends are declared but due to the fact that they are declared at the financial year end due to the fact that they are declared at the end of the year it means they are only going to be declared and then paid when next year they are going to be paid next year they will be paid next year they will be paid next year so because the because of the matching concept of accounting for our gap principles you know that income and expenses must be recorded in the year in which they occurred so it simply means that we're going to debit dividends for final dividend this is for final dividends please note this is for final dividends we'll be debiting dividends and crediting what a liability that liability is called shareholders shareholders for dividends this is an expense this is a liability so we'll be debiting dividends and crediting shareholders for dividends is liability because this is the amount that we owe the shareholders and we'll be paying it the following year but for interim it's simple you just you are just debiting what you are debiting For interim dividends, it's simple. You 
debit dividends and your credit bank because you would have paid the dividends here you owe the dividends so shareholders for dividends is also an account we'll be dealing with It increases on the debit on the credit side because it's a liability. It increases on the credit side, increases on the credit side, and decreases on the debit side. Right. So those are the accounts you must know. Another concept: tax. Tax is 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 also treated is also paid in a special way like for income tax you know we, we only receive we only get to know how much we owe to SAS at the end of the financial year so due to the fact that we don't want to pay the tax at the end of the financial year because we're not sure that we might we, we will have money to pay that tax at the end of the financial year. Two payments, two interim payments are made during the year. Two interim payments are made during the year to pay tax. Two interim payments are made because we know that tax is paid to SARS, right? They are made to SARS. See? So, by making these early payments, you know that early payments are classified as what? Prepaid expenses. And they are assets. Right? So, by making these two payments, we are creating an asset, which is called SAS income tax. We are creating an asset. So, by creating an asset, that means for payment number one, we will, we will debit this account with amount X for payment number two. We will debit with this account. You know, obviously, don't mind this payment thing. The contra account here, obviously, is going to be because we, we, have, we would have paid using our money. The contra account is going to be bank. Bank, right? So, bank will be credited. SAS income tax is debited. So this is payment number one, payment number two. In other words, by looking at this situation, it means that SARS owes us money, right? Because we made prepaid prepayments. We it's a prepaid expense. It's an asset to us. And then when we receive, when we receive, when we receive, you know, the statement from SARS telling us that we owe such and such amount that amount that we owe SAS the actual amount will be credited will be credited in this side will be credited in this side and that amount is the actual income tax right it's what we owe SAS and remember income tax is debited that amount is what we actually do, what we, are, what we actually owe SARS. So this means these amounts can differ. These amounts. This amount and the total of these two amounts can differ. So for example, let's say the total here amounted to 50,000 and here what we actually owe SARS is 40,000. Do you understand that we paid more than we were owing? So it means SARS is going to owe us how much? 10,000, right? So this account will have a balance carried down on the credit side of 10,000, right? And then a balance brought down where? On the debit side of 10,000, right? That's what this means. So SARS is owing us. SARS is 
owing us. SAS owes us. But if here it was 60,000 on this amount, if it was 60,000 and we actually paid two interim dividends during the year of 50,000, it means we paid less than what we owe SAS. So we're going to have a balance carry down this side and the balance brought down this side of 10,000. Right. You see the balance brought down is on the credit side. So it means this is a liability now. We are owing SARS 10,000. I hope that's just clear. And th those are the important concepts that you must know under companies. See you guys later. I'll do an example, a practice example of how to treat certain transactions relating to company.